So now that we've looked at some ways that we can format our strings, I want to get into uh, how we can specifically format a string and get the item to look exactly the way we want it to look in the output. So I've put together a quick program here that gives us a price per ounce for whatever this item is. We're going to format that string the way that we want it. Right now it's in just a basic concatenation and then we're writing it out to the user. So if we look at this program, all it does is output the current price is and it's 17.36. So we're not seeing really anything, you know, like fancy going on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this into what we call a string.format method. And so one of the first things that we need to, to think about is we have the type string, which is a variable type in, in which we can store string data, but we also have a class built into the .NET framework called string. And so we can use string, and, and you'll notice the difference that it's capitalized, dot .format, and put these items inside of the parentheses because format is a method that I'm calling that is going to let me do some things that I want to do to this string to output it the way I want. And you notice the difference in color, um, string variables are dark blue and lowercase string class is a lighter blue and uppercase. So one of the first things I want to do is create what we call a placeholder index inside of this string and change the way that this string is set up. So when we're using string.format kind of like our interpolated strings where we put variable names, these are an index starting at zero and then I put a comma and then I can have a comma separated list of variables in this string that will replace whatever items I've put in here starting with zero, one, two, three, etc. So the changes I just made to our program shouldn't change this string as we see it because I haven't applied any formatting yet. But what I can apply here on this indice is some formatting. So let's say I want this in a monetary format. I could put colon C. And so that's automatically going to format that variable into a monetary with the dollar sign out front and a two digit decimal place if I had more than two digits in the decimal. So there's a lot of things we can do with this kind of formatting and it's not just about numbers, although sometimes we want to make sure that we are displaying a certain number of decimal points or not in some cases. Sometimes it's also about controlling spacing. So I added a string for an item name and maybe we want to set that up in more of a table like format in our output with our price. So I could format this string to set up some columns for me. So inside of curly braces, column zero, um, the first number is the index, so we would start at zero. The second number is an alignment number, and so I'm going to make these all the same. Um, let's do one. Oops. And so these would be my columns. I'm going to have two columns, and then in the columns I want the item name and I want the price per ounce. And so we set up as many columns as we need starting at index zero. We set up the items that are going to go inside of those columns. And then what we get is a nicely formatted set of, of items. And let's say we wanted to add in some column headers. That might be something we would want to do. So I could write a line right before my table gets output that does essentially the same thing but actually says item name and price so actually we call these string literals so actually just writing out what I want them to say versus variables make sure I'm using right lines for both of those and then let's look at what that looks like. So now I get item name, widget, price right underneath, nice spacing, kind of a tabular format. So there's a lot of things that we can do with the string.format. There's things that we can do to format dates which is important, um, being able to put things in particular amounts of time and controlling alignment. 
And so you can look at the full specification for the string.format method in the MSDN documentation, and I strongly recommend that you do that. And just get some practice. They've got a bunch of, of examples in here. Um, you can get some practice writing some different types of string.format things and outputting stuff to the screen.